everybody, it's Ms. Pubis, and I'm back with another Algebra 1 video, Lesson 51, Piecewise Defined Functions. Sometimes you call them piecewise functions. They can be called both ways. But basically, you see piecewise, it's this type of function. Um, we are going to be able to identify domain and range of piecewise defined functions, evaluate piecewise defined functions on a given value of x, explain why an absolute value function is considered a piecewise defined function, and then graph piecewise defined functions by hand in simple cases or with technology for more complicated cases. We're going to keep it simple. And then we're going to look at key features of the graph. This goes along with our standard where we are asked to graph functions, piecewise defined functions, and that includes our step functions that we talked about yesterday, as well as our absolute value functions, what we've already talked about in the past. So we are on page 242 in the notes, and we're just going to keep on rolling through the notes. So if you are uh, confused where we are, we're probably just going on to the next page. So here we go, on page 242, we are looking at example one. And example one is made up of two components. This is our piecewise function. So if you notice the piece on the left that has the open circle and is headed to the left, it's that flat horizontal line. This is a constant function, or we looked at it yesterday as our one of our step functions. And then we have this piece that has a closed circle and then looks very, very quadratic. Okay, so that is our piecewise defined function, two separate functions put together, almost like a Frankenstein, right? Frankenstein's monster was a, a, a person, I use that in quotes, person that was constructed of other people's body parts. So this is like a Frankenstein function where we are taking parts of other functions and we're stitching them together to create a new function. Now if you notice, I have the equation written down here and it is consisting of two parts. Right, I have a constant piece and a quadratic piece. If I look at my um, equation here, it has two parts. There's a constant piece and there's a quadratic piece. We also have the intervals, the if pieces from yesterday, from the step function. And so that allows us to look at, you know, over certain um, x values, we're going to be looking at different parts of the equation, the, that piecewise function. So that's not the point of this. The point of this is to actually be able to answer what's over there in the table in the columns. So we're going to erase all this. And we are going to look at how to evaluate. That means we're going to be given an x value and we're going to choose a y value using the graph. And then we're also going to look at how to evaluate just using an equation. And they should agree with each other. If you have a graph and an equation of the, the things that are on the graph, then they should agree with each other. So let's look at this. Remember that these guys are just x values. All of these. That's an x, that's an x, that's an x, that's an x, that's an x. And what they want you to put over here after the equal sign are the y values. I think I made that a little too big. But what we're going to do is we're just going to give a y value as an answer if our x is negative 2 or negative 1. So I'm going to look where x is negative 2. So x is negative 2 right here. And that means I need to either go up or go down along that x value and try to figure out where the function lives. And so if I go up, look right there. There's my function exists right there at that y value of 1. So f of negative 2 equals 1. So that's what we're looking for if we are looking at this on a graph. If we're looking at this in an equation, we have to make a decision, and that's where this piece comes in. We are given x values. We have to determine, is this negative 2, is it less than negative 1, or is that negative 2 greater than or equal to negative 1. And so you're going to have to ask yourself that question. Where does it fall in? It can't fall into both. And that's um, one of the, the issues that students in the past have run into is they were like, well, I'm just going to plug it in both and get an answer. But that would mean that I would have maybe two points. Let's say we're going to put one right here. You know, if I plug in uh, negative 2 into two equations and I get two different y values, does it pass that vertical line test? 
It does not. So I want to make sure that when I plug in a negative 2, I only get one answer, okay, because I want it to be a function. It's a piecewise defined function. So it is a function. So negative 2 fits into this piece where negative 2 is less than negative 1. So I'm going to use this equation. But I don't really have an x value to plug in. There's no x's here. It's just a y value of 1. So since I can't plug in anything, I'm just going to put what number I have there, 1. Now notice these match. And they're supposed to match. Okay, so if you have an equation and you don't have a graph, you're going to have to rely on the equations. But if you have a graph, it's not too bad. All right, so let's go and look where x is negative 1. So x is negative 1, I have a choice. I can either go up or I can go down. So if I go up, I'm at an open circle. If I go down, I'm at a closed circle. And if you have to choose between open circle and closed circle, you choose closed circle every time. So I want to choose this y value of negative 2. So you always choose the closed circle. And let's look at why we always choose the closed circle. The equation is going to help us. So again, we're looking at this component. Where does negative 1 fit in? Does, is negative 1 less than negative 1? Or is negative 1 greater than or equal to negative 1? It's the greater than or equal to, and it's really because of that equal to that that's the one that I want to choose. So because this is a closed circle, because this is an equal to bar, because negative 1 is on that line, remember that boundary line, that fence that we drew yesterday with our step functions? Because it's on that line, I want to choose something where it's equal to. And so that means I choose this equation. So I'm looking at negative 1 squared uh, minus 3. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And that happens to be the same thing I got with my graph. Let's look at 0, f of 0. So here's 0. If I go up, I'm not going to hit my function. But if I go down, I'm going to hit my function right here. has a y value of negative 3. All right, again, I want to look in here and check to see if I should be where I should be plugging this in. But notice that I'm on that quadratic, so I'm probably going to be using this piece. So let's see. Is 0 less than negative 1, or is 0 greater than or equal to negative 1? 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1, so I should use the quadratic there. So I'm going to plug in 0. 0 squared minus 3 is 0 minus 3, which is negative 3, which is what I originally got from the graph. Hey, we're, we're doing good. The equation and the graph should match. Let's look at another one. Let's do 1, f of 1. So f of 1 is here. The y part of my point is right here at negative 2. Where does 1 fit in? Is 1 less than negative 1? Or is 1 greater than or equal to negative 1? It's greater than or equal to negative 1. So I want to make sure I plug in a 1 there. So 1 squared minus 3. 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Does it match what I originally got from the graph? Yes, it did. So I want you to try the last one. I want you to look at it from the graph. Can you tell what the y values are? And then can you do the same thing with the equation that we've been doing? All right, let's look at this. f of 2. So here's 2. As my x, my y value is 1. How'd that go? All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 2. Where does 2 fit in? Is 2 less than negative 1? Or is 2 greater than or equal to negative 1? It's greater than or equal to, so we're going to use this last equation. We're going to try plugging in 2. So 2 squared minus 3, 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1. Is that what we got? Yes, it is. 
All right, let's look at a little bit of domain and range. We did this with the step functions. And remember that unless there is a gap in the x's, we will have a domain that is continuous. Range, we might have to play around with. So let's think, how far left does this function go? It goes left to negative infinity, right? That's what that implies. How far right does this function go? The quadratic up here implies that it goes to positive infinity. The question is, does it skip anything in between negative infinity and positive infinity? Because that could happen. So let's pretend we're walking along this line. So as I come from negative infinity, here I go, here I go, here I go, I get to an open circle, and it's almost like a portal. Have you ever played the game Portal? It's almost like Portal, and it's like an elevator almost, and I just magically appear down here, and then I keep walking to the right, walking to the right, walking to the right, and then I go off to positive infinity. Did I skip over any x values? Absolutely not. So for this one, domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, let's look at the range. So I'm going to erase this. How low does it go? Well, it looks like the lowest point is right here at that negative 3, right? It's not going any lower than that negative 3. So we're going to put a negative 3 here. And negative 3 gets a bracket. How far up does this function go? It goes up to positive infinity. And you may be like, well, Miss Phoebus, the quadratic piece kind of took over. And I would agree, yes, it did. Um, it has the lowest point as well as the highest point. But when I say from negative 3 to infinity, I am including all of the constant function as well. So it kind of gets wrapped in that. So you're still looking lowest to highest. You're still looking left to right. You just have more pieces, and sometimes they play a part of it. Sometimes they don't. All right, let's do another one. Okay, so here we have, let's look at what we have. Here we have three pieces. Do you see them? We have a constant piece. And then we have two linear pieces. This linear piece has a negative slope. This linear piece has a positive slope. So I have constant and two linear. If you notice, here's my constant piece. Here's my linear with the negative slope. Here's my linear with the positive slope. Remember that these are my starting stopping points. Especially there, there's a starting and a stopping point. This one's going left forever. This one's going right forever. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look to see, can we figure out where all of these different x values are? Negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, and then we're going to play around with the equations again. Let's look at negative 4. So negative 4 right here on the x-axis, going up I wouldn't hit the function, but going down... So we are looking where x is negative 4. So that's where this piece and this piece and this piece play a role. Is negative 4 less than or equal to negative 3? Is negative 4 between negative 3 and 0? Is negative 4 greater than or equal to 0? Which one of those is true? This top one right here. This top one is true. Negative 4 is less than negative 3. Now notice, again, we're dealing with that constant piece. There's no x to plug in, so all I write is negative 2. Now, because we looked at the graph, you should be able to get that, but I definitely want you practicing with the equations because there might be a time when you don't have a graph. You only have equations. All right, let's look at negative 2. So on the graph, negative 2. I'm not going to go down. I'm going to go up right there, y value of 6. All right, we should expect when we plug in negative 2 into one of these parts, these equations, remember you can only plug it into one and get a valid answer. If I get three different answers, that's not okay because that means that it fails the vertical line test. So where is this true? Is negative 2 less than or equal to negative 3? Is negative 3 less than negative 2 is less than 0? Or is negative 2 greater than or equal to 0? Which one of those is true? 
this one's true. Negative 2 is between negative 3 and 0. So that means I need to plug in a negative 2. So I've got a negative, negative 2, plus 4. A negative, negative 2 is a positive 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, which matches what's on my graph. Now, the point of doing this is that to show you, you can plug in points. Let's say you had to graph a uh, piecewise function. You can plug in points. You just have to know which place to be able to plug in to get y value so you can graph it. All right, let's look at f of 0, or g of 0. Let's look at g of 0. Um, 0 is here. But look, there's also a point here. So the question is, I've got an open circle up here, a closed circle down here. Which, which one do I choose? I have to make a decision. We always choose the closed circle. The closed circle has a y value of 0. Don't choose the open circle. Always choose the closed circle. All right, let's see where 0 fits in. Is 0 less than or equal to negative 3? Is negative 3 less than 0 is less than 0? Or is 0 greater than or equal to 0? Which one is true? This one right here. That one's true. If I plug in 0 for x, I get 0. They match, which is what I want. All right, I'm going to have you try 2 and 4. Pause the video. All right, an x value of 2 gives me a y value of 2. An x value of 4 gives me a y value of 4. 2 and 4 are both greater than 0. So when I plug in a 2 for x, I get 2. When I plug in a 4 for x, I get 4. So 2 and 4. All right, let's look at our domain and our range. So how far left does this go? Negative infinity, according to this piece. How far right does this go? According to that piece, positive infinity. Let's see if there's any breaks. So I come from the left, negative infinity. I hit a closed circle, but as soon as I try to start going beyond that closed circle, I pop up here at that open circle. I go right, 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 to this other open circle. As soon as I try to go get to zero exactly, I pop down here. I go right, 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 right. There are no gaps in my domain. So my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, how low does it go? Well, here I have a break. The lowest part is right here is this negative 2. The lowest it goes is negative 2. And then this piece kind of takes over from a y value of 0 going up to a y value of positive infinity. This will go and surpass where this piece is, so it will kind of take over. So I have two parts, and I taught you that if there's two parts, you're going to union them. Remember? We're going to marry them together. Dun, dun, da, da. Two ranges get to become one range with this, guys. All right, so we have our first part, and it's constant. So we're just going to have negative 2, and then we're going to pick up the other range of this, this piece right here. And we are going to say it goes from 0 to positive infinity. So remember, we can marry the ranges together. We can tape them together, but we have to use that union. All right, so here in example 3, we have a graph. Can you tell how many pieces make up this function? There should be three pieces. We have a linear piece. We have a quadratic piece and we have a cubic piece so there are three pieces that make up this function oh I told you the next part what function families are represented linear quadratic and cubic I haven't played a lot with the cubics, but there is a cubic piece there. All right, I'm going to erase this, and I want you to try to figure out what's the domain and the range. How 
how far left does this function go? I see a stopping point here at negative 5. If I follow along, I have an open circle here, which would zoom me up here. So no gap there. And then looks like the furthest right I go is 4. So the domain is from negative 5 to 4. All right, let's look at the range. How low does it go? The lowest point that it goes is negative 3. Now, some people would argue and they would say, well, do I put a closed circle? Do I put an open circle? Is this a bracket? Is this a parenthesis? The closed circle takes over, so we're going to put a bracket there. So the range goes from negative 3. How far up does it go? Can you tell? goes up to 3, but is there any gap? So let's look. So as I go here, I've got y values, yes, y values all the way up, right? I'm using all these y values, and then this guy starts taking over, and so there is no gap in the range. So I'm looking from negative 3 to positive 3. All right, let's look at zeros. Ooh, zeros. We talked about that with our quadratics. Zeros are x-intercepts. Can you tell where the x-intercepts are? I have one here, and here, and here. So I have three x-intercepts. One's at negative 5, one's at negative 1, and one's at 1. The y-intercepts, can you tell where the y-intercepts are? The y-intercepts are. We only have one y-intercept at 1, 0, comma, 1. And you should only have one y-intercept. If you have more than one y-intercept, not a function. All right, the minimum value, what do you think is the lowest value? And this is y-value, lowest y-value. It's the minimum, negative 3. And what's the highest y-value? 3. And that, again, goes along with the range. All right, so then I have all of these pieces I've got to figure out. I'm going to let you try to figure them out. Can you figure out where f of negative 4, f of negative 2, f of 0, and f of 2 are? f of negative 4, we go down to negative 1. f of negative 2 is where these two join. We don't know which one's an open circle or a closed circle, but that doesn't matter because we know that the y value is negative 3. f of 0, we have to go up to 1, and f of 2, ooh, we have to make a choice. Do you remember? Which one do we choose, open circle or closed circle? We choose closed circle every time, and closed circle has a y value of 1. So lots of different things that we can still talk about. Domain, range, zeros, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, minimum, maximum. We could even talk in behavior. Our ends aren't really headed anywhere, but they could be. Um, and then we can talk about individual x values, what y values we get. All right, so now we are to where we have to worry about not having, we don't have a graph. How are we going to figure out the answer? And this is in your homework, so I want you to definitely make sure you're paying attention to this. So notice that I have different letters. I have F, and that's going to mean choose this one. I have G, that means we're going to choose this one. I have H, that means we're going to choose this one. Okay, so the letter indicates which function, which piecewise function we're going to use. The number that's inside is going to be the X value that we're plugging in. We have to pay attention to things like this to determine where we're going to plug it in and get one answer. Do not get more than one answer only one answer for every single blank there will be one answer never two because that would mean one x has two y values not a function okay so let's start with a so i'm going to erase all of this and we're going to start with a so we're looking at f of two that means we're looking here at f of x the rest of the g of x the h of x ignore it for now you have to make a decision. Is 2 less than or equal to 0, or is 2 greater than 0? Which one is true? 2 is greater than 0. So that means I'm going to look at this. So if there's an x, I should plug in 
two where there's an x. There is not an x. So I only write down the y value that I have. So the question is, where is negative 4 fit in? Is negative 4 less than or equal to 0 or greater than 0? It is less than or equal to 0. So I look here. Is there an x to plug something in? There isn't. So I just write that y value of 3. F of 0. So where does it fit? Is 0 less than or equal to 0 or greater than 0? 0 is less than or equal to 0 because it's got the equal to bar. So we choose the 3. Okay, I'm going to have you do letter D. Which one are we going to choose? We're going to choose line 1 or line 2. We're looking at plugging in a half. Is a half less than or equal to zero or greater than or e greater than zero? It is greater than zero. One half is greater than zero, so we're going to write a two in that blank. All right, we're done with that function f of x. We're going to move to g of x because this has a g. And the next four have g's. So that's what we're going to be, why we're going to be using it. And so we're going to look at plugging in a 7. Now the question is, is 7 less than or equal to 3 or greater than 3? 7 is greater than 3. But wait a minute, do you see there's an x there? So I need to plug in 7 and work it out. 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 1 is 13. Now let's do another one. Now we have g of 0. So, is 0 less than or equal to 3 or greater than 3? 0 is less than or equal to 3, so I'm going to plug in a 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. All right, let's do another one. G of negative 1, is negative 1 less than or equal to 3 or is it greater than 3? Negative 1 is less than or equal to 3. So negative 1 plus 5 is 4. All right, I'm going to let you choose H. You figure out what the answer to H is. All right, is 3 less than or equal to 3 or greater than 3? 3 is less than or equal to because of the equal to. It works here. So we're going to do 3 plus 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. All right, we're done with the G of X's. Let's look at the H of X's. All right, H of negative 4. So is negative 4 less than or equal to negative 2 or greater than negative 2? It's less than or equal to, so I'm going to plug that in. 1 half times negative 4 minus 4. 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. All right, let's try another one. G of negative 2. So is negative 2 less than or equal to negative 2 or greater than negative 2? Negative 2 is less than or equal to negative 2. So, 1 half times negative 2 minus 4. 1 half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. All right, you think you can wrap up the last two? You try. See what you can do. Pause the video. All right, h of negative 1. Negative 1, hmm. Negative 1 is greater than negative 2, so I've got 3 minus 2 times negative 1. That's 3 plus 2, which is 5. All right, then we've got h of 6. So where does 6 fit in? Is it less than or equal to negative 2, or is it greater than negative 2? It's greater 3. Minus 2 times 6 is 3 minus 12, which is negative 9. All right, so you've got a question like this. You will be given a piecewise function. You will be given maybe even multiple ones, and you will be asked to evaluate a specific piecewise function using this notation. 
So make sure you practice this in the homework. Ask questions if you are uh, having trouble with it, things. All right. On the next page, you're going to sketch the first quadrant. Label the x-axis as time, the y-axis as height above the ground. Um, I use this as a warm-up when we are in class because it's something that we are used to looking at. So there is my height above the ground. There is my time. That's what I want you to draw on this grid. And then we have a story. David starts at the main floor level with the ground. The elevator that he's riding goes up at a constant rate for 15 seconds and stops at the third floor, 30 feet up. He waits 20 seconds as the man enters. The elevator goes up. The elevator goes up at a constant rate for 10 seconds and stops at the fifth floor, 50 feet up. David exits the elevator. So remember those story problems we did at the beginning of the semester? This is just a story problem. So let's see if we can figure out how to graph this. So looks like my time is in, um, you know, my time is in intervals of tens. So I'm going to count by ten. So let's get a color that we can see. So I'm going to do ten, twenty, 30, 40, let's see, he's traveling for 15, 35, 45 seconds, so 50. If you want to spread it out more, you can. All right, he's going to go 50 feet up in the air, so let's do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. You want to evenly space these out makes a good graph. Let's get some of these different colors in here. It might help if I see it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the main floor level, ground level. We're going to be at zero, zero. All right, constant rate of 15 seconds um, stops at the third floor. So 15 seconds, he's 30 feet in the air, right there. It's a nice constant slope. And then he waits for 20 seconds. So 5, 10, 15, 20. And then the elevator goes up at a constant rate for 10 seconds and stops at the fifth floor. So, so 10 more seconds. We need to be at the 50th floor, 50 feet. 10 more seconds, we need to be at the 50 foot mark, the fifth floor, and then he leaves and who knows what the rest of his story is, right? For the rest of the time, he may, he may live on the fifth floor of the whatever building he's in. That may be it for him, okay? He may come back down, he may go higher. We don't know the rest of the story. But remember doing this? You've been looking at piecewise functions for a long time. We have a linear piece joined with a constant piece, joined with another linear piece, joined with another constant piece. Okay, and these model real world, real world, real world problems very well. Okay, because we have lots of people choosing things and making decisions, and sometimes you know one quadratic isn't going to cut it. Maybe one linear function isn't going to cut it. Sometimes you have to piece things together because things are changing. Okay, so piecewise functions of all the functions are the most real world that you can get. Imagine, um, think about the uh, like what the heart monitors things do, and you know it's beeping and stuff like that. Can you imagine coming up with an one single equation for this, but if you look at it as pieces, one piece, another piece, another piece, another piece, you could write an equation for it, it would be long, but you could come up with something that would um, represent something like that, okay? So piecewise defined functions are really, really good at real world problems. So steps for graphing a piecewise function, identify lines of constraint. We're going to call them fences. We did graph those with our step functions. Remember the highlighter that I told you to break out? That was your fences, your constraints. You're going to graph the given function in the appropriate spaces. 
um, I do have this in here. It's almost like you're cutting out pieces of the graph and then stitching them together again like a Frankenstein graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to break out our highlighter. Remember that these are the pieces where we draw our vertical lines. So on both of these, I'm only drawing one vertical line. So example one, my vertical line goes through zero. On example two, my vertical line goes through one. So you can go through and draw in all your vertical lines. The more lines that you have, the more pieces that you have. So what I've done is I've cut the plane here into two parts. And that's why I have two equations. So I'm going to have to the right. So you see here, numbers greater than zero or equal to. I'm going to have to the right are all going to be graphed with an X. The values to the left, let's change colors. So the values to the left, which would be over here, I'm going to graph as negative X. Now, somebody is going to be on the line. I'm going to graph in color. You don't have to graph in color. You don't have to graph the uh, green line. Remember that highlighted line. But all of these things are to help you. Okay. So I usually like to graph the ones first. So it is a line with a slope of 1, a y-intercept of 0. So my y-intercept is 0. The question is here, and I would usually point it at it, can I have an open circle or can I have a closed circle? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look here. Do you see that equal to bar? That means at 0, 0, I'm going to have a closed circle. So let's erase that, and let's put in a closed circle at 0, 0. So my y-intercept is at 0, 0. The slope of this line is 1, so I'm going to go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. You can go up 2, right 2, but you just keep going. There's no restriction to the right. But I can't go down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1. I can't be over here because this is space for the blue function. The blue function has a different slope and a different way. Well, same way intercept, but it has a different slope. This area is only for, to the left, is only for y equals negative x. So I can't graph anything to the left of that green line for my red function. So I have to stick to the right. That's what I've all right, let's look at the blue line. It's got a slope of negative 1 and then a y value or y intercept of 0. So it's going to have a y intercept at 0, but do you see here that there's an open circle? So you could wrap it around. Okay? But really at 0 0 there is a closed circle there. A slope of negative 1 would mean go up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1. You can go up 2, left 2, all the way across. But I can't come over here. I can't, like, draw the rest of my line here because that's red lines territory. I can't draw over there um, or else it wouldn't be considered a function. Now, let's look at this because you are used to seeing these. You should know that this, I can't draw. this is an absolute value graph. Absolute value functions. You've been graphing piecewise functions when you graph absolute value functions. You've been graphing piecewise functions for a long time. Okay, so an absolute value function is a piecewise defined function. It has a positive arm, it has a negative arm. It has a split right down the middle where the vertex is. Okay, so don't be scared of piecewise functions. Like I said, you've been graphing them for a while now. All right, let's look at example two. We have our vertical line drawn at one. So let's look here. I'm going to do the top one in red again. So I'm looking at less than 1. That's over here. Everything less than 1 is to the left. So I'm going to write x plus 2. And this I just find helpful. So, And then this is everything to the right of 1. So that's this side. 
I'm going to graph 2x minus 5. All right, so let's look at to the left. So my y-intercept is 2. I can graph that, and my slope is a 1. So I'm going to go up one, right one, but uh-oh, I'm on that green line. So I need to know, on that green line, am I allowed to be an open circle or a closed circle? So go back to this symbol. You see how it's an open circle? So up one, right one, I can be there as long as I'm an open circle. I can't keep going up one, right one, up one, right one, because then I'll be in blue lines territory. That's not okay. But I can go down one, left one, down one, left one. I can go down two, left, down two, left. So it's almost like you don't want to cross the fence. I'm going to keep this on one side of that green line that with my open circle there. All right, now for my blue line, I'm going to graph 2x, y equals 2x minus 5. So I am allowed to be, because I have that closed circle, I'm allowed to graph on the green line with a closed circle. But I have a small problem. My small problem is this. My y-intercept is at negative 5 right here. And I can't put a point there that's blue because I'm in red line territory. So what I usually do, and it's going to be hard for me, I'm going to describe it to you, um, because usually I do lots of pointing and, you know, motioning and things like that. So I can't draw that blue point that I just drew, but I can put my point, my pencil point there when I'm graphing, and I can count with slope to move across to the green line. So I can count up to right one and put my point right here and that can be a closed circle because remember there's an equal to bar so i really just put my pencil point there on that first blue dot it's not really there i use slope to help me move over to that green line and now i'm able to keep going up to right one up to right one up to right one one, two, right, one. Now, some people, they like to graph the whole line and then go back and erase. That's okay, too. It's just a lot of erasing sometimes. And I don't want you to get confused. So you can either be on one side of the line or the other. You kind of have to pay attention to the inequality symbols to figure out open circle, closed circle on the line. All right, let's do another one. Okay, so I have, let me give a green marker, I've got a vertical line at zero, okay, everything to the left of zero is going to be a quadratic, and everything to the right of zero is going to be a square root function. We haven't talked about square root functions a whole lot, but I'll talk you through it. Okay, so let's graph the quadratic. Now notice the quadratic piece has an open circle on that green line. So we can graph on there, but it has to be open. So um, it looks like it's been shifted up four. It opens up because there's a positive one in the front. So we'll shift this up four from zero, zero. One, two, three, four, put a point. And usually our path, and I'm gonna draw this to the right, but usually it's one, three, five, right? We don't want the right side, we want the left side. So we can do one, three this way, and five isn't gonna fit. If you wanna plug in negative one and negative two and get y values, you can do that as well. That is the quadratic piece that's to the left of x equals zero. Now to the right, we're going to be able to draw the square root piece. And the square root has also been shifted up four. But when you plug in values for x that you can take the square root of, you can just get points as well. So you can take the square root of zero. The square root of zero is zero. Zero plus four is four. Zero, four. But I can put a closed circle there because it has an equal two bar. And look, it fills in that open circle. So that means they join up. I can take the square root of 1. What's the square root of 1? 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. I can't take the square root of 2. That's not a nice number. And the square root of 3 is not a nice number either. Ooh, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. So 4, 6. 
can't take the square root of 5 or 6 or 7 or 8. Ooh, square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. So that's about all I've got there. And that's your piecewise function. The red piece and the blue piece together are a new function. And so when you talk about graphic design and you want to get some shapes into a computer and you need to get them in as equations, piecewise functions all the way, building shapes. All right, let's look at example four. We have a vertical line. Can you tell where the vertical line is? Vertical line's at negative two, right through here. All right, to the left, because it's less than negative two, I have an absolute value. Negative absolute value of x minus 5 plus 2. And then to the right, greater than negative 2, so it's all here, I have a quadratic. This whole labeling thing is not necessary, but it's helpful sometimes. All right, so let's look at the absolute value. This means right 5 and up 2. We're also going to be reflecting that over the x-axis. So for just a second, what I want to do is I want to kind of pretend that I'm just graphing this absolute value. So I'm going to go right 5. I'm going to go up to right here is my vertex. But that is on the wrong side. It is definitely not on the left of that green line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the arms. The right arm is not going to get me across the green line, but the left arm might. So I would follow this along, and this is where, like, tiny point makers, you're doing well. Hey, right there, that's important. Let's look. Close. Nope. Open circle at that point, and then we can just keep on keeping on, because now we can graph over here. And then we can just go back and erase to the right. So that's a technique that some people may want to do, is graph the whole thing, but then erase parts of it. Um, all right, for the right-hand side, this means go left 2 and down 5. So from 0, 0, left 2, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll fill in that open circle with a closed circle. And then remember my A is 1, so 1, 3, 5. So I can go up 1, up 3. One, two, three, four, five. I don't think seven will fit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. It fits right up there. And there is the rest of my graph. So part absolute value, which really it looks part linear, and then part quadratic. So these take time and practice and knowing how to read and making sure that you aren't crossing over that green line, making sure you're creating something that does not pass the vertical line test. All right, let's look at example five. Can you tell where to draw the vertical line? Hey, there's two places. Do you see it? There's a one and there's a zero. So let's draw those. There. That means there's going to be a gap. Remember how all of them so far have uh, joined up together? They've connected? You don't have to. Okay, so greater than 1, that's over here. This is going to be the quadratic. And then less than 0, that's over here. This is going to be the linear piece. So let's do the quadratic first. Quadratic has been shifted down 1, so at 0, 0 would be where we usually start. We shifted down 1. Now, I cannot graph this function here, but I'm going to put a dot here anyway. I'm going to go back and erase it later. Okay? Remember, my pattern is up 1, right 1. Now, I can be graphing here. The question is, what kind of circle? So, see that? Open circle. Try to make it open. And then that was 1, and then 3... And then 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, you can put in x values like we were doing earlier to graph those. Get rid of that red point that I drew because I don't need it. And that is the part of the piecewise function that is the quadratic. Let's look at graphing the other part. So the linear part has a y-intercept at 3, 1, 2, 3. Can I put... A closed circle or it doesn't need to be open? It can be closed because it has an equal to bar. The slope is 
negative one, so I can't go down one, right one, but I can go up one, left one, up one, left one. I can go up two, left two. Remember, because it's linear. Constant slope. There we go. So the red and the blue do not meet up. That means that it is not continuous. That means there's a break in my domain. So if I was going to look at the domain of this, it would be from negative infinity all the way up to zero. And I would join that with one, and it would get a parenthesis because it has that uh, greater than all the way to infinity. So you can have a break in your domain, you just union it. Remember, marry it. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's look at six. Can you tell where my vertical line is? It's at one. Let's draw that in. All right. And then to the left, less than 1, I've got negative x minus 1. To the right, I've got my quadratic, x minus 3 squared minus 1. So let's graph the linear piece. It's got a y-intercept at negative 1. It's got a slope of negative 1. So up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, up 2, left 2, all the way across the plane. You can even go down one, right one, but you have to use an open circle there. And then we connect these. And there is the left side of my graph. Let's get the right side. Um, for the right side, remember, this is going to be right three, down one. So I have to start at zero, zero, go right three, one, two, three, down one. There is my vertex. My A is one, so I can go up one, three, then five, and that's about all I'm going to be able to fit. But I can start mirror imaging that on the other side because there's a little bit of space. Um, there is a closed circle that I can put, but that's about all I'm going to be able to get to the left because that green line stops it. So this actually has a continuous domain even though it does look like there's a break as soon as you get to this open circle then you pop up here so the domain here would be from negative infinity to positive infinity, which is different than the one in example five there is a gap between the axes all right so let's look at example seven now notice that we've got several vertical lines that we need to draw we need to draw one at negative three to draw one at negative one. We need to draw one at two. What we've done is we've cut our plane into one, two, three, four regions, but we only have three equations in here. So that means we're going to have a gap where we have something where it's not filled in. So let's look and try to see where we're putting what. So between negative 3 and negative 1, so here's negative 3, here's negative 1, right in here is going to be just 3. So here's going to be where our gap is. There's going to be nothing over here. All right, between negative 1 and 2, that's here, we're going to graph x squared, and then greater than 2, we're going to graph 3x. Okay, now, let's say for just a second, because we already know we're going to have just a blank space in this area. Let's say we had a graph, and it was already graphed for us, and they said find f of, what is that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, find f of negative 7. Because we're in this gap space where there's no function that is there, you could say the function does not exist, or our fancy college talk, D-N-E, does not exist. That's a spelled backwards, but you know, that's okay. All right, so if that happens, you have an answer to give. It does not exist in that space. Anyway, that was a, like a little bit of a side note. Okay, so we're going to graph, in between negative 3 and negative 1, we're going to graph a horizontal line at 3. The question is what symbols, what, uh, open circles or closed circles? So I've got open circles on both sides. So I've got at negative 3, 3, I have an open circle. At negative 1, 3, I have an open circle. Connect those with a horizontal line, like our stop functions yesterday, right? 
All right, between negative 1 and 2, I have a quadratic. And a quadratic that's not been transformed goes through 0, 0. I'm very happy that 0, 0 is there, available for me to graph. All right, remember our pattern 1, 3. Okay, question is, on this green line that I've, I've got right here, I'm, the question I'm looking at is right here, should be an open circle or a closed circle? Because I'm looking at 2, you see how that doesn't have an equal to bar? That's going to be an open circle. So let's see about getting an open circle in here. Okay, so I've got to the right. Let's look to the left. I could go up one left one for my vertex. And looky there, I can put a closed circle. So I have a closed circle here as well. And that's about all we get with that quadratic. Okay. Then I have a linear piece that has a slope of 3 and a y-intercept of 0. So I'm going to have to be careful with that because it's going to start at 0, but I can't graph that um, y-intercept there right now because that's where the blue function looks. I'm going to draw this in orange. So I can't do that um, and start there right this moment, but I can use the slope to help me move across that line. So I'm going to go up three, right one, still not across, so I'm going to go up three one more time, right one, and I can put a closed circle there because it has a an equal to bar. And then I can keep going up three and run, and if I had more space, I could graph more points. But that's about all that I've got there. So, more pieces, you just break it down and do more things. That's it. Let's look at number eight, and this will be our last thing that we do. We're not going to get into the writing. Um, we're not going to get into the writing of the equations of a piecewise function. We're going to stop a little bit early, but this will be on your test tomorrow. Um, more so looking at graphs and evaluating piecewise functions than having to graph a piecewise function. But I definitely want you to practice this because you never can tell if it's going to pop up on the end of course the TN ready or not. All right, can you figure out where to graph our vertical lines? Our vertical lines. We need to graph at 1 and at 4. And then the rest of those are just repeats. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So I've cut the plane into three parts, and I have three pieces. So that's nice. Um, I have a piece here that's less than 1, that's going to be negative x minus 1. I have a piece right here that's in between 1 and 4, that's 2x plus 1. And then I have a piece that's over here at the end, that's going to be negative x plus 10. I always like to start on the left, but you can pretty much start anywhere. Alright, with my red function, I've got a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of negative 1. So I can go down 1 right one, but I'm on a green line, so I can graph that as long as it is an open circle. But I need to graph more than that, so I'm going to go up one left one, up one left one, up two left two, up two left two, and so on, all the way across, because I don't have a boundary to the left, I have a boundary to the right. All right, so that's my red function. Let's get the blue one in there. It's got a y-intercept of 1, which would start here. Again, remember, that's going to be where I put my pencil, and it's just going to kind of sit there. And then I'm going to use slope to help me move across. So the slope of the line is 2, so I'm going to go up 2, right 1. I can graph on here as long as it is a closed circle. So up 2, right 1, I get a closed circle. I wish I had like a small eraser. So that means that I am at 2, 1 with a closed circle. And then I'm going to keep going up to right 1, up to right 1, up to right 1. I can graph on that other gray line with a closed circle as well. So there is my linear function that piece. And then let's look at the last piece is green. So I've got a y-intercept of 10. So that's here. But remember, I'm not supposed to graph there. I'm not supposed to graph in the blue section either. So I'm going to kind of be using my marker and trying to get it to where you can see it. But I'm only really going to start graphing once I hit this side of the green line. So here's my y-intercept. I'm going to go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one. 
right one down, right one down one. Oh, now right here I can put a point, but it has to be open. So I put an open circle right there. Down one, right one, down one, right one, all the way across. There it goes. All right, let's look at domain and range one more time. Make sure we get it. Okay. The green pieces we could just totally get rid of. Just keep that in mind. All right, the domain. How far left does it go? It goes left to negative infinity. How far right does it go? To positive infinity. Are there any gaps in between? There are not. I go from open circle to closed circle, closed circle to open circle. They join up nicely. Domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at the range. How low does it go? Well, according to this one, it goes down forever. How high does it go? According to this one, it goes up forever. So its range is from negative infinity to positive infinity as long as there are no gaps, but they pretty much overlap each other in the y values. So negative infinity to positive infinity. You can look at x-intercepts. You can look at y-intercepts. All of those things are true, which you can pull from your graph. Okay, but these are just piecewise functions, Frankenstein functions. We're building new functions with pieces of functions that we already know how to graph. If you're having trouble graphing, you need to jump, join me in a Google Meet so I can help you out. You can put these in the graphing calculator, but it's one of those things that we don't have time for. If you are really interested in that, contact me and let me know. Okay, and we will talk about getting these in the graphing calculator for you. All right, have a wonderful day. Get ready for your test tomorrow. It's coming soon. Bye.